So welcome everyone. Um, before uh, uh, we start, I would like to remind all our panelists, uh, guests and audience that the, the webinar is recorded and it will be available on Unimad website. Please uh, join me to welcome Mr. Uh, Will Benjeloun, uh, UNIMAD Honorary President and former President of the Muhammad Sank University of Rabat. Welcome, Mr. Benjeloun, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Linda. Um, I assume everybody is in the morning, so I can say good morning rather safely. Uh, so, uh, good morning, and I hope you're having a nice day. Uh, it's my pleasure on behalf of uh, UNIMED to welcome the panelists and all the participants uh, in this webinar on ecopreneuria and sustainability. Uh, as you may know, UNIMED, in order to better serve and involve its 140 member universities, has set up a system of thematic sub-networks to address the issues facing the Mediterranean, uh, touching on areas ranging from journalism to tourism, to transport, to logistics, and so forth. These networks have significantly amplified UNIMED's actions and increased the reach uh, and visibility of uh, our organization. Today, we are the guests of the sub-network on employability, uh, represented here by Dean Salim uh, Maqdesi, with a webinar topic uh, that addresses one of the most pressing issues uh, of our times. How do we orient our business and entrepreneurship efforts towards a green economy, thus favoring a better environment for future generations and guaranteeing sustainability? It is significant that this webinar takes place during the UNIMED Week in Brussels an annual event devoted to open exchange and communication with the European Commission and Parliament, and an opportunity for UNIMED to convey the concerns of its member universities and the higher education institutions of the Mediterranean, and to identify EU policy trends that impact our institutions. Our panelists today, uh, managers, consultants, ecopreneurs, uh, this is a field rather far away from my own immediate uh, uh, area, but they are in fact activists representing a new dynamic committed business sector. Uh, as green entrepreneurs, they have adopted a business model that is economically profitable. Otherwise it would not be a business. It has to be economically uh, profitable. And I hope they're all economically profitable businesses that you're engaged in but they also have to be environmentally conscious and create social value. They will provide us with definitions, success stories, and hands-on experience, following which we will turn to the social impacts and particularly how universities can contribute to advancing ecopreneurship as part of their social responsibility and commitment to a better world. This is particularly relevant today as we face limited natural resources, an increase in world population, and a decrease in biodiversity. So I'm sure that like me, all participants today are looking forward to today's presentations and to what we can learn about ecopreneurship. Thanks, uh, Mr. Uh, Benjeloun. Uh, and uh, please uh, join me to welcome as well, Professor Salim Adisi sub-network on employability coordinator and dean of the faculty of economics and business administration. Uh, Professor uh, Maktisi, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Linda. Uh, thank you, Professor Benjaloun for this introduction. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, Professor Benjaloun, dear panelists, uh, my colleague, Dr. Bukhzam, Ms. Karkour, Mr. Jordi Oliver, and my friends from UNIMED and all the universities, my partners, guests. I'm very honored and pleased to be with you today in UNIMED Week 2021. In fact, as Linda told, it is the sixth edition of UNIMED Week. Uh, we all know that the last few years have shown many challenges that have highlighted certain priorities in life but also in terms of entrepreneurship and employability. These challenges 
in fact, although sometimes restrictive, have prompted us to think, uh, to consume, but also to think about doing business and investing differently. We find ourselves today adopting a more sustainable way of thinking, taking into account the world of tomorrow. This perspective focused on long-term visions and defined the new business model that is emerging. It is a business world that is more based on sustainable operating methods. The university in general, our universities should not be so far. Its role, the role of our universities is to ensure knowledge, training, and ultimately the employability of future generations cannot be marginalized from this development. In this context, UNIMED, in its innovative way, created the sub-network on employability, which embeds today 35 universities from 15 different countries. Our sub-network will have a focus on all kinds of debates and projects, webinars, activities regarding entrepreneurship in general, but also female entrepreneurship, gender equality, full and productive employment, green entrepreneurship or ecopreneurship or eco-entrepreneurship and university incubators and centers. The sub-network, our sub-network on employability is therefore aimed at strengthening economic and social cohesion by promoting cross-border transnational and interregional cooperation and sustainable local development. Uh, the SDGs confirm the place that universities, our universities, will have in the society of tomorrow and the development of new professions, but also in the need of, for innovation and entrepreneurship and move towards eco-entrepreneurship or ecopreneurship. I would like in this context to thank you, to thank the honorable speakers, panelists, Thank you all for your presence today, and I wish you a fruitful discussion. Thanks, Professor uh, Ma'disi. Uh, before uh, I welcome our panelists, what we are all waiting for, uh, I would like to invite our uh, audience to be active uh, by writing their questions in the chat box. And please, uh, if possible, to mention the country you are coming from. Um, I would like to, uh, to welcome Mrs. Maya Karpour. Uh, she's uh, an environmental consultant, uh, an ecopreneur, and the managing director of Eco Consult. Uh, Mrs. Maya, the floor is yours. If you would like to introduce yourself or add uh, anything about yourself before uh, I start with my first question. Thank you. Thank you, Linda, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. It's really a pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, the topic of eco-entrepreneurship is really dear to my heart. I'm actually myself as an eco-entrepreneur, having started my own uh, sustainability consultancy about 17 years ago. Uh, I'm currently based in Lebanon, in Beirut, and I've been working uh, closely coaching and training green entrepreneurs for the past seven years. And I find this uh, really, really rewarding because uh, in a way it gives us all a little bit of hope. Uh, and uh, as Professor Benjaloun mentioned before, I really feel that this is also a, a contribution, uh, a form of uh, being an environmental activist directly or indirectly, because once you believe in it and you really believe in sustainability and this way of going forward, it becomes your way of life also and you want to fight for it. Um, so I will be sharing a presentation uh, just to have a few supportive slides. Um, we've also created as Eco Consulting a new initiative a year and a half ago called the Circular Hub, which is all about trying to uh, open trainings, conferences and uh, uh, events related to uh, the circular economy, the environment and sustainability. And that's also one of the ways we are raising awareness and communicating about the circular economy in, uh, in Lebanon. Uh, so I've been asked to uh, briefly talk about the circular economy. I'm sure many of you already know about the concept of a circular economy, but in case uh, some uh, of you are not familiar with it, 
basically the idea uh, behind it is that currently we really live mostly in a world that is linear our economic system the way we we actually run businesses corporations is extremely linear why is it so because um, the tendency is to actually extract raw materials from the crust of our earth or from uh, you know agriculture uh, from production so we extract we extract raw materials we use them to make products we manufacture we process and then at the end most of the time we dump uh, what we don't need anymore so we end up accumulating a really huge amount of, of waste and we have a, a very big uh, problem worldwide in terms of waste management because despite everything that we're trying to do in terms of trying to reduce waste and recycle uh the the model itself is straight very linear and it it, it it ends up resulting in waste and most of this waste unfortunately especially in the mediterranean and more developing countries ends up in nature it ends up in illegal landfills uh, being burned and we have um, a big problem of pollution of littering of uh, waste in the sea and the oceans sorry linda did you wait were you saying something? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. Listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I heard. I heard some someone speaking. Uh, so, in a, in a model of a circular economy, we need to step back. We want to really step back and try to think: How can we design a world where we actually don't end up with all of this waste, where we value every single resource as being super important and precious for us, because almost no resources, very few resources, are infinite. Most of them are finite. So the idea is to design from the beginning products which are meant to be disassembled at the end of their life and reintroduced back into the production system, either as technical nutrients. So here we're talking about metals, plastic, aluminum, anything that is non-organic. So how can we reintroduce all of these materials back into the production cycle uh, whether to the same manufacturing process, a completely dif different industry, a completely different user, reusing things again, recirculating things again, refurbishing, and at the, at the last resort, recycling, because recycling is really very energy consuming, but try to think about models, business models that are very different, whereby we really value these technical resources instead of extracting them straight from the earth as virgin materials. And also anything that is from biological uh, origins, so this is what we call biological nutrients, to also be recollected again to uh, regenerate our natural system, such as in the form of compost or taking the vitamins and minerals out of it in order to produce uh, other um, natural uh, products. So the main message is really to keep resources in the system for as long as possible in a circular economy. And of course, in order to get there, we need a lot of support. It's a, it's a model that needs time to build. However, it is taking uh, momentum now across the world. So it's being uh, uh, really integrated into policies and requirements, especially in the EU, which is something that is very um, uh, hopeful. Uh, in terms of the principles, the three main principles of a circular economy is to design from the onset, uh, to design out waste and pollution. How can we come up with products uh, that will actually result in no waste because they have been thought in a very smart way from the beginning in a way where we can uh, retake back all the elements from them and recirculate them. So we want to keep products and materials in use the longest possible, as much as we can, recirculate them. And we want, as I mentioned, to regenerate natural systems. So what I'm going to, um, to tell you more about also is what is happening today uh, in Lebanon in terms of the circular economy, to give you a few examples of entrepreneurs who are actually uh, following this path and trying to work in a more circular way. Before I give a few examples, um, I want to mention that, I mean, you probably know that the, we, we are in, a, in the middle of one of the biggest economic crises ever heard of in Lebanon, with the devaluation of the Lebanese lira, uh, you know, just like going like crazy devaluating day after day, which is making business for all entrepreneurs excessively hard and difficult and very uncertain. And um, the in a way, one of the positive aspects of this uh, is the fact that 
since most imported products are becoming excessively um, expensive and out of reach, for, especially for startups and young entrepreneurs, there is now uh, a tendency to try to actually look at what is available locally and what we can reuse. So we are seeing a trend in terms of reusing, repurposing, refurbishing, upcycling that we have never heard of before. And some people are doing it without even realizing that it's actually part of the circular economy model. Uh, example are fashion designers who are actually taking dead stock and leftover fabric in order to upcycle. We have interior designers who are taking back old furniture or secondhand furniture, repurposing them, refurbishing them, putting them back as new on the market. There are many examples like this that are happening now, which are um, strengthening this model of a circular economy and in a way proving that it can be done, uh, which, is, which is great. Some other eco-entrepreneurs are uh, taking uh, a step back and trying to eco-design from the beginning. So thinking about their models, their business models completely differently to be part of this uh, sharing economy, recirculation economy. And so I'll be showing you a few of them. Uh, one is uh, this uh, e-bike company called Wave, which started um, less than a year ago. And they developed an app in order to have uh, to uh, provide ele electric bikes, but in a sus subscription model. So the idea here is that they don't own the people who, uh, uh, who work with Wave, the, their clients, they don't own the bikes. They actually rent the bikes on a monthly basis. It's a subscription model. And the idea behind the subscription model actually falls really well in line with the circular economy because the owners of the bike are actually the wave, wave company. And this means that they can maintain all the, these bikes in a much better way. They can uh, uh, repair them when needed. They can recirculate them. And that means that these bikes will actually last much longer. They can repair specific parts, take disassemble, take anything that's not working well and, uh, you know, repurpose the bikes again. So they're really working in this model of a shared economy and uh, circular economy approach. Um, and it is a lower impact, uh, of course, than having a car or a um, motorcycle because it's less uh, energy consumption. And it, they're being extremely successful right now, again, because of the fact that we're having shortages in, uh, in mazout and fuel in the country. So uh, having uh, e-bikes, uh, it's changing the mentalities also. It is contributing to changing the mentalities. People who would have never thought about biking to work are now seeing this as the, something that is saving their lives almost because of the traffic, but also because of the fuel shortages. Another example is Savvy Element, uh, a young entrepreneur who is producing uh, green cleaning products and green home care products. And when we say green, it's uh, less, it's without toxicity. So uh, chemicals that are being used and natural ingredients are being used, but low toxicity. And the model of Sa Savvy Element is also to try as much as possible to be circular. So they're adopting, they are putting on the market shampoo bars, for example, in order to get rid of packaging and in order to reduce the, the volume of the shampoos. And it's actually their most successful product at the moment and selling very well. Uh, so the idea also for anything that is in terms of plastic containers is to have a take, take, they have a take back policy where people get a discount when they refill their containers with cleaning products. So again, part of this recirculation uh, economy and recirculation of packaging rather than one time usage packaging. A third example is uh, tire revolution. Uh, so basically it's a company that deals with rubber and they have realized that we have so many discarded tires everywhere in landfills in the country. So the idea here was to reverse engineer the process and get back to raw uh, rubber, uh, synthetic rubber, it's not, it's not uh, authentic rubber, it's synthetic rubber. And they're uh, producing the raw material now. Uh, they're also producing a few items such as the mats and the cars uh, out of them. But what happened today is because again of this economic crisis, they managed to position themselves as suppliers of raw rubber at a very low cost compared to imported rubber because we don't have uh, rubber production in the country. So it has also provided them with corporate advantages and uh, being much more resilient to the COVID and the current economic crisis. 
And the last uh, two examples that I have, compost biology uh, is uh, also a, uh, a very active composting company. And they came up with a lot of different business models to really strengthen the way we are composting today and provide solutions in terms of composting. And what is happening again, because synthetic fertilizers and synthetic pesticides, especially fertilizers are uh, imported and extremely expensive now, again, not affordable for farmers, local composting is now becoming a resource that people are asking for, farmers are asking for. And so the, the work of actually composting Baladi is booming today. And it is again, a way to regenerate natural systems and uh, be in a circular model. And my last example is a uh, Live Love Recycle, uh, which uh, is promoting recycling. And there is nothing new in the, the way that things are being recycled, but what they have put forward is a mechanism to simplify recycling. So they have an app where you put you, they, it explains very clearly what you need to do, and they have an e-bike to come and collect the recycling. So you schedule a pickup and you put, uh, you follow their instructions in terms of what you can recycle, what you can't, how to separate it, very straightforward. And then they have someone coming and picking it up from your door. Uh, and this is a paid service because we do not have a lot of people who are uh, uh, today very, uh, concerned about the state of pollution and environment and the garbage crisis in the country are willing to actually pay for the with the knowledge that the the the, the, the valuable recyclables that they have will not end up in the sea and in rivers and and, and polluting and they will be actually recycled so um, these were the examples i wanted to highlight of course there are many many more but i thought i'll, I'll give concrete examples that could inspire also very interesting uh, examples uh, at the top and the I know three of them uh, and they are really active. But here, um, can we highlight a bit how can green entrepreneurs or ecopreneurs or even youth uh, come up with innovative solutions to the environmental challenges? Um, yes, uh, Linda, actually, I chose these examples on purpose to show, to talk about the innovative aspect of uh, being an entrepreneur. So if we go back to, for example, Live Love Recycle, uh, the way they thought about it was not about, okay, we're going to, to favor recycling. Uh, we ask people to, to recycle and then we ask them to work with a municipality or something. No, they came up with a mechanism, being something trendy, being something, uh, they have this app. Now they are actually working on making gamification for mm -hmm. the app so people get points, they get discounts. They actually have discounts in some of the other eco-entrepreneurs, so savvy elements, they can get, uh, if you accumulate points, you can get clean, green cleaning products from free, for free from savvy element. So there is this spirit of collaboration between green entrepreneurs and the network that is building up, and they're coming with very creative solutions. Uh, upcycling, for example, they're looking for dead stock. They're really looking into different old ways of doing things, but modernizing them. Uh, the fact mm -hmm. that uh, things are difficult today make people more creative and the younger generation, the ones who are aware and determined are coming up with very with a lot of innovative ideas. Thanks, uh, thanks Maya. I would like to remind our uh, panelists, uh, guests and audience uh, to write in the chat box any question you, you want to address uh, to, uh, to Maya. She will be uh, with us uh, for, for a while. Um, thanks a lot. Um, it was a very interesting intervention. Uh, and now I would like to welcome... Uh, Thank Dr. you, Linda. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Yorty Oliver. Uh, he is a co-founder and CEO at uh, Inedit and a consultant on eco-innovation. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Yorty. Thank you very much. Good morning, Linda. So uh, I don't know if you'd like to add anything, maybe uh, in order to introduce Inedit uh, or anything about you before uh, I start with my uh, first question. Yes, of course. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for your kind invitation. I'm very pleased to, to participate, to take part in, the, in this uh, in this panel. Um, we at Inedit, we are uh, consultants. Uh, we were born uh, 12 years ago in 2009 as a spin-off at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. Um, and we work on what Maya uh, explained. We work on a circular economy. Uh, so we work on, on projects with companies that want to shift their business models, their products, their uh, 
uh, strategies towards a circular economy and we provide them with the knowledge tools metrics etc that they need to do to make this happen thank you so uh, i will start with the first question since um, we know that you hold a phd and the usual, usual path is the academic career so uh, what was mainly your motivation in order to shift uh, and become an ecopreneur and a consultant in the field of uh, circular uh, economy and climate change well, you're right that for many uh, PhD students, um, the usual path uh, after a PhD is to have an, an academic career. But I think that this is uh, changing, at least what, what I know uh, in Barcelona and, and Catalonia. Um, universities are generating hundreds of PhDs uh, every year. And, and there's no physical capacity to hire all, all these PhDs. So the, this idea that um, studying a PhD means that you will be a professor or a researcher at the academia uh, is like a, is a bit old uh, fashioned because mm -hmm. the reality is that the majority of PhDs that are currently studying um, won't work at an academia, but will work somewhere else. We'll work at, at the industry, we'll work as consultants, we'll work at the public administration, so PhD, having the grade of PhD uh, means that you have been trained uh, to uh, deal with uh, complex uh, problems, that you know uh, scientific method, uh, you know how to, to publish, to write a paper, etc. all this stuff. But um, I think that currently it doesn't mean that you have to follow an academic career. It's just you have some new skills, no new tools. Do you know a lot about a certain topic? And this knowledge can be applied to any any sector, any any different uh, job. Um, in my case, in my case, um, I was studying the PhD on environmental sciences at the Institute of Environmental Science and Technology uh, in Barcelona. And it was 2007, 2008, that together with a group of PhD colleagues and some professors, we started thinking on the possibility to, to establish a consultancy so that we could keep working with the same team uh, in the same topic that we had been studying, that we loved, that we liked, uh, and working locally. Because the alternative of pursuing an academic career after uh, finishing our PhDs uh, would be that any of uh, all, all of us, all of us went to went abroad, no, to uh, um, to have international experiences, uh, postdocs, and going abroad um, at that time, I mean, was easy because there were a lot of uh, possibilities, scholarships, etc. Going abroad was easy, but coming back was um, very very difficult or even impossible um, because there were no, there were opportunities, local opportunities to uh, hiring to hire uh, researchers after they had been two, three, four years uh, abroad. So it was a bit risky. Uh, so we decided to, to create uh, Inedit to work as consultants. We had the support of the UAB uh, Research Park. So the university has a research park that supports um, professors and students uh, to bring to the market their ideas, um, their knowledge. And this was very useful and it's, it's something that I really, really appreciate because at that time I was a, an academic in, in training, but I was a, a very, very academic and I had to, and we had as a team to change our mindset, uh, to see that we had a knowledge that had a value in the market, but that we had to have a clear value proposition that we have to identify who were our customers, how would we reach them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So to, to create a company and um, this took years for us to change our our hat no from academia to to uh, entrepreneurs to uh, to business uh, people uh but we, we got we got there um and then uh you and really, uh, the, the, the ecosystem and the context where you live had to do to achieve uh, your purpose yes yes i i, I think so um the context uh, was the financial crisis of 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. So that okay. it wasn't an easy context somehow. Um, in Spain, for instance, that is our case, um, the, the, the construction sector um, was very, very, very important. So a large 
part of uh, uh, employability, uh, GDP, etc., was on the building sector, the construction, and this, this disappeared from one day to the other. Just simply, it collapsed absolutely, mm -hmm. and so there was a big, big economic crash. Um, but we were born there, so we were born there. So that was our um, normal situation. So we were born in a crisis. So we had never lived in, before in a in a more wealthy uh, situation. So this helped us also to because we, we didn't experience that crisis. We were, were, were born in the crisis. But having the support from the university at the early stages, having the support from the research part uh, were very important uh, because our creation, the creation of Inedit from the university also helped uh, the research group to put some order in the projects they did so that the university kept the research projects and we kept the more applied or more consultant projects that were being done through the university. And so this, this also helped no, to, to differentiate what was being uh, project, consultancy projects and research projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if we would like to uh, deliver a recommendation mainly to universities uh, when it comes to circular economy and about the future of the civil field, uh, what will be your recommendation for them? Well, um, Maya presented it very well. So, as as you have as you have seen, um, this is a systemic change that has to come. So we have to decarbonize the economy. We have to use this, the the resources in a, a smarter way, uh, and this is not something that um, will happen without the participation of all society. So university has to be there. The public administration has to be there. The Private companies have to be there. Entrepreneurs have to be there. Um, so, university has a central role um, to do some to do research to, to, for this for these future business models, the materials that we need, etc. So, so, there's a part of research that universities have to focus on on it. But also, universities have to train the professionals of the future. So, you have to have a responsibility to train professionals with uh, new skills, with new with a new vision of the economy, with new capa capacities. And yes, I, I encourage universities to uh, create these this new professionals uh, because uh, we cannot do this transition towards a circular economy or decarbonized economy with uh, the skills of the past. We have to think differently. And uh, this is an important role of universities. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Jordi. So uh, to summarize mainly uh, your, your idea, so we have to, uh, to shift from a different uh, uh, mindset. Uh, we can even during crisis uh, uh, spot opportunities and come up mainly with business uh, ideas. And uh, you highlighted the important role of, uh, of the ecosystem and in particular the universities. And, um, and of course, we, we need uh, new skills in order uh, to, uh, to implement the circular economy and, uh, and to, uh, uh, to engage our uh, university uh, students. Uh, there is a question um, for you, Dr. Uh, Jordi. Uh, so uh, do you think that circular economy could be considered a cost or an investment to a firm? So in terms of profitability and uh, short run and long run. Well, uh, to me, to me, this is obviously an opportunity, but it depends a lot. Um, when, when we work with companies, for instance, we, we work with um, a, um, around 80, 80 companies every year, no? So from different sectors and different sizes. So you see, when you speak with them, the very, there are large cultural differences inside the companies and the drivers uh, for doing this change towards circular solutions are different. It's different if your client is asking you directly to do this change, that is, is a, it's a trend that you see in the books. Um, so it's, it's very different. But to me, what makes the difference is the short, mid or long term uh, perspective that companies have. So if you look at the short term, this will be a cost. If you look at the long term or mid term, uh, this is clearly not only an opportunity, it's a must, it's something you must do. Um, 
and has to be embedded with the strategy of, 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 the, of the business. Um, so this is why entrepreneurs have this advantage because uh, entrepreneurs, the, the short term is always uh, very uh, difficult, very gray, no? uh, but the, the entrepreneurs have a long term uh, vision. Yeah. So yes. embedding circularity, sustainability, decarbonization uh, in the business models that are being born today uh, is, is very important because it's, it's not only an opportunity. It's, 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 as I said, it's, it's a massive something they, they have to do if they want to be competitive in the economy in, in, in the future. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, so another reminder for uh, our audience, in case uh, of any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat box. Um, I would like to thank you so much for being with us, uh, knowing as well your busy schedule, same as our, our uh, panelists. It was a great pleasure uh, to have you with us. And uh, I will be waiting for your questions uh, in case uh, you want to ask uh, anything to Amaya or to Dr. Yorti. Um, thanks a lot. So uh, please join me to welcome Dr. Rula Bukhuzam, a consultant in management systems and instructor at the Lebanese University. Welcome, Dr. Rula. And the floor is yours in case you would like to introduce as well yourself uh, and more about what you are doing before I ask you my first question. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the panelists and the audience. Uh, I'm really very uh, honest to uh, join with you this uh, event for the UNIMED and uh, I'm happy to share some uh, of my experience, let's say, uh, to uh, within the network of uh, enhancing the entrepreneurship and especially dedicated in the eco, eco environment. Um, uh, basically, I'm a university professor at the Uni Lebanese University. Uh, also, I'm working as a researcher for the CNRS. Uh, uh, I have been uh, joined uh, some uh, or being active, as uh, Dr. Wael said, being active in the eco uh, uh, sustainable uh, uh, ecosystem. Also, it's not it was not the first my my uh, basic major, but uh, you feel like like uh, you are you were trained to be in in certain bassin, which uh, you, you need to to make something to uh, uh, to, uh, to to keep a traces and to make a, a a real uh, modification in the uh, background. So I will tell you later on about my experience, exper especially within the entrepreneurship uh, activity in Lebanon for the last, uh, let's say, uh, th three years. Thank you, Dr. Rula. So from your uh, experience uh, with the university students and the Lebanese university, how can universities play an active role and contribute to the sustainable development goals and most importantly to engage mainly the students? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Linda, for the questions. Uh, the United Nations defines sustainable development as development that meets uh, the needs of the present without compromising the ability of a future generation to meet their own uh, needs. So as such, sustainable development is not only environmental task, uh, environmental issues, but also it is economic, it's social, it's cultural issues as well. Uh, so, uh, given the primary role as knowledge producer, the higher education system and institute can serve as a powerful means to create a more sustainable future. So, the concept of education for sustainable development has become, in recent years, one of the core educational initiatives to help address many of the problems associated with human development. And here, what's really make difference between different academic institutions now in the market. So, how they can really promoting those uh, sustainable development goal uh, uh, in their academic program. Uh, according to UNESCO as well, education for sustainable development empowers people to change the way they think and work towards a sustainable future. And that's what we heard already from uh, Mr. Zorki and also Ms. Uh, uh, Ms. Karkour, that uh, we need really to shift our mind, not to go for conventional uh, teaching and learning system. We need to, uh, to introduce a new learning system in, for, in the academic program. And uh, here, uh, I, let me, or, or if you allow me to emphasize on teaching our teachers before teaching our students, because uh, the thing, it, it should come from the source 
of the uh, of that to make real a different changes so it uh, therefore involved making access to good quality education available at every stage of life so we're not talking only about uh, waiting till till student till they reach uh, the um, uh, graduate level but we need to have a reform at the uh, at the academic from school school level till the university one more specifically it involves educating students on the necessity of sustainable development by integrating sustainable development issues into all aspects of teaching research and uh, and service services uh, and uh, really here like I, I like to to uh, to open the bracket uh, for a nice example given by the um, uh, Ministry of uh, 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 of um, uh, teaching or maybe the uh, culture uh, ministry in France where they introduced the uh, explosion of uh, 4 August in Beirut as a real example uh, for risk management regarding any product uh, uh, or chemical product which we have to uh, to store so it was really a very uh, real real uh, real time and uh, life uh, example which we, we are uh, initiating or enhancing on some theoretical uh, uh, theoretical issue to be introduced for the generation this remains reorienting the education system at all levels to help people think and behave in a ways that foster a more sustainable planet. So now we are start like hearing a lot, a lot thinking about the global citizenship, recycling, climate change, biodiversity, renewable energy, and and social responsibility, and all those. It was really emphasized from the. UN 17 social development goals, which were started in 2017, and they are the goals to be implemented until 2030. In practice, it means equipping students with the requisite knowledge, skills, attitude, values to create a sustainable future. To that end, students should cultivate critical and creative thinking skills, engage in authentic interdisciplinary learning activity, and develop a value system that emphasizes responsibility to itself, to self, uh, others, and the planet. So the Higher Education uh, Institute, how they need to, resp to respond. I can talk firstly about the inclusion of sustainability in the strategic plans of sust and sustainability plans. So the governance and operation should be aligned with the SDG, incorporating into university report. Secondly, the participation in research projects uh, provide research knowledge, innovation, and solution toward achieving the SDG. As universities tend to receive a private and public research funds to directly and indirectly solve world, world issues, and universities are responsible for uh, providing in-depth academic and vocational training needed to achieve the SDG. It should address interdisciplinary and the transdisciplinary research, innovation, and solution national and local implementation and capacity building for research. Knowing that higher education institutes have become one of the most uh, important incubators for ideas and solutions to global problems, mainly with their central location between government network, uh, civil society and industry partner, which means that they have enormous potential to generate a positive impact. But role of higher education institution is not limited to research and innovation, but rather includes the human element, which is more important. They are the student. Those students are the future leaders who will come to work and to achieve the goals for sustainable development. The more their understanding and awareness for these goals, the more they will reflect positively on the way they deal with them in the future. Uh, another issue also is regarding the institutional culture. Academia plays a fundamental role in the formation of global citizenship and design strategy to develop social responsible competency in students who will be the agent of change in the future. So they need to advocate for faculty members to help the student to set up clubs, network, campaign, uh, projects to promote the importance of being an active member of the society. The student need to take an active role in uh, creating their own learning environment and recognizing opportunity to help attain the SDG. Now we uh, we see uh, uh, 
uh, you know, we, we see some examples in the universe, uh, Lebanese universities, uh, like they have a separate uh, bureau or offices or atelier uh, uh, just dedicated for uh, brainstorming to to help uh, uh, to help students uh, come with new ideas uh, for technology transfer. And the most important is to emphasize on a, a good. Uh, relationship between industrial sector, between research sector and the, the market, what the market are needs. So um, here we come to say that the external leadership, which the university has to play, uh, and they are responsible for raising awareness about the SDG as, as well, whether through public lecture, community events, or forums, universities, should implement cross-sectoral dialogue and actions. They need to collaborate with other institutions and work with policymaker and leader to identify problems and potential solutions to create a more sustainable, inclusive, and innovative world. It may also involve implementing more blended learning programs, so creating more university partnership, involve, involving sustainable uh, development, as well as integrating sustainable development issue and initiative in the curriculum across all all the discipline. So education for sustainable development and the UN sustainable development goals go hand by hand. Indeed, an increasing number of universities are offering now degree and certificate programs in sustainable development. Yes, thanks, um, Dr. Rula. Uh, so talking about partnerships, I would like uh, all the audience, maybe mainly, I would like to know more about uh, Water Medine project and uh, mainly the purpose of this project, uh, the stakeholders, and uh, especially that it's not limited to Lebanon or to, to one country. So uh, if you'd like um, to, to let us know more about uh, this project. Sure, sure, with pleasure. Thank you, Linda. Uh, thank you for giving me really this uh, uh, like opportunity to talk about the project which is running not only in Lebanon, but in Mediterranean country, but uh, which has, uh, which uh, you know, it, uh, uh, it comes with a lot of benefit for the Lebanese uh, market with all with all means. But uh, before talking about Water Medin project, I would like to to talk about the MIP uh, because Water Medin it comes at the baby, at the at the first baby of MIP. MIP it is the Mediterranean Innovation Partnership Network for Youth Entrepreneurship and Technology Transfer in the Agri Food Sector. Um, this uh, network, it was established in 2016 by Ian Bari, uh, Bari, the uh, European Center for Research uh, in Agriculture uh, Sector, uh, but now it's located in Bari since the main uh, head office it is in Bari. Uh, so it is a Mediterranean network and it was the first Mediterranean uh, initiative uh, for youth entrepreneurship and technology transfer in this agri-food sector. Uh, it covers uh, 13 uh, countries from the Mediterranean uh, region. Uh, in between Albania, Algeria, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Morocco, Palestine, Tunisia, uh, and uh, other inter international intergovernmental organizations uh, from the southeastern of Europe. Uh, it aims to create the Mediterranean innovation ecosystem enhancing collaboration among public institution and innovation support organization which they are plenty not only in lebanon but in the whole um, in the whole uh, in, in any countries around the world really playing a good role in the entrepreneurship uh, sector uh, and they have the uh, let's say the objective to support the creation and innovation but they are mainly specialized in the agri-food uh, sector for enterprise and young entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurs uh, activity uh, through uh, knowledge sharing uh, a transfer uh, transfer of expertise capacity building uh, corporation for business creation and innovation uh, they are working so this network it has several activities in between uh, and the mainly it's capacity building for iso iso which are the innovation support organization so uh, they are doing a lot of training for capacity building and also to assure a, a collaboration and exchange of experience between different iso players between countries so it's not only uh, um, at the level of one country uh, internally but also it should be uh, exchanged within the Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean uh, contributors in the MIP. Uh, 
in addition to that, that Ian Barry uh, has dedicated uh, a master degree program uh, on innovation and sustainable development, and they uh, allocated 12 scholarships uh, for participants coming from the MIP uh, network. Uh, now, uh, as MIP started in 2016, but only in 2020, we had the, the first uh, technical cooperation project, which is uh, Water Medin. Uh, Water Medin, uh, it's a uh, 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 the project uh, uh, related to water management and uh, uh, marine resources. Uh, it was financed by the Italian cooperation and implemented by Siambari. Uh, it aims to contribute for sustainable development in line also with the SDG. Uh, one of them is promoting youth entrepreneurship, uh, youth inclusion, uh, social socioeconomic opportunity in the water and marine uh, coastal sector in the Med uh, Mediterranean region. And uh, of of course, I like to mention that uh, there were special attention uh, were dedicated for women's uh, women's role and women led business uh, to, to be like engaged in this uh, project. Uh, the water and coastal resources sector has been chosen for its relevance with the main issue uh, in the region uh, and for the possible multiple benefit uh, and expected impact. So since we have the same background, so we can have the same challenges as also the, main, the same uh, uh, level of benefit. Uh, so it was intending to managing the demand of water resources, efficacy of water network and health services, pollution reduction, contribution to counter to groundwater replenishment, improvement of access of water in area not served, and better management of marine coastal resources. Uh, in Water Medin, we were only three countries from the Mediterranean network, Lebanon uh, through the CNRS, uh, which I'm the counterpart uh, presenting uh, CNRS in this uh, project. Uh, Palestine, it was Palace, the Palestinian Technology for Science and Technology. And um, from Tunisia, there were two institutions, the uh, ERESA and ENS, ENSTM. Uh, the main beneficiary of the project, they were uh, national counterparts, of course, and implementing agency as uh, innovation support organization, uh, innovative startup uh, companies, uh, spe especially led by women and young entrepreneurs. Uh, and here, like we are almost at the end of the of the project, since when we start, we start by a, the training and capacity building for ISO managers, which was for 10 days. Uh, it was uh, unfortunate. Unfortunately, it was virtual because of the COVID situation, but I still was really very, uh, we were very lucky to have uh, um, uh, many speakers coming from around the world, which in reality, if we want to gather them in Lebanon, it wouldn't be so uh, so easy, but uh, here I can see it like an added, added value and uh, advantage for, uh, for the um, uh, training of uh, of the ISO managers. Uh, then we passed to the second phase, which was the uh, selection of uh, startups and entrepreneurships working in water resources management. Uh, uh, here, I can tell you that uh, uh, even I, I was not from the field of uh, pitching and uh, 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 getting the like uh, 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 idea, uh, idea, ideation uh, level from, uh, from youth, but uh, I was uh, surprised and astonished by the capacity which our uh, young generation has and here really I can you know I cannot pass without giving tribute to the good academic sector uh, which we have in Lebanon and for the very good competence which we have in our uh, professors at the university so we we pitch like uh, more than 20 uh, 20 idea uh, they project they present their project and we select only five winners uh, for an award of 10,000 euro to go for develop more their project and they get the a chance to for a brokerage event where they want to show their project in front of donors and other investors in Italy hopefully it will be done uh, real uh, uh, real events in Italy in the end of uh, October hopefully. Hopefully. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Rula. Very, very interesting uh, project. And if possible, please, uh, uh, maybe to add in the chat box, uh, the website, uh, sure. um, because I believe uh, the audience will, uh, will would, would like to know more uh, about the project and other uh, interesting uh, things you are doing. Uh, same maybe for uh, 
Uh, Maya, if you'd like to add the website uh, of uh, Eco Consulting, uh, same for uh, Dr. Uh, Yorji. Uh, before, um, and thanks a lot, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ola. Would you like to add? Uh, yes, just uh, let me pass one message because really I, I, I feel because all of us are going, we are coming from the same background, which emphasize on the uh, like enhancing the entrepreneurship in the country. And here I'm inviting uh, any uh, stakeholder, any institution are really interested in the joining us within the MIP network, it will be our pleasure to that you will be a part because uh, we know like gathering uh, more more ideas, more uh, more expertise. It will be for the benefit of our network. Thanks, um, thanks, Doctor. I believe a lot of uh, our audience will will join you, same as our uh, panelists as well. Uh, before uh, many many thanks for your time and for your intervention. You. Before I uh, move uh, to Mrs. Anna, uh, I would like to uh, Mrs. Uh, Maya, I would like to answer uh, one of the questions in the chat box. Uh, just one second, go back to the question. So uh, it was a question uh, from Mr. Lutfi, and uh, he was asking um, uh, the university cannot be sustainable without uh, its social environmental. Um, so Linda, I think it's no, the other it's question the other about one, entrepreneurship. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Sorry, yes, not, yes. So, yeah. so Mr. Arif mainly. <laughs> so how is uh, the issue of entrepreneurship can be addressed in highly exceptional context or collapsing situations like the one of Lebanon, where priorities of people have shifted to other urgent problems? Yes, um, what uh, I wanted to address this question because indeed we are facing a really uh, huge crisis in the country. But as I mentioned before, this actually is making some of the environmental enterprises, the ones which are following a model of circular economy, uh, becoming more resilient and having more opportunities uh, in the sense of being able to reuse resources that are already available locally and to come up with very creative, innovative solutions to uh, repurpose them, repair them, uh, create new models, new business models, uh, refurbish, upcycle, meaning you, know, you take uh, something that has been used and you transform it into something new that is of even higher value uh, at a lower cost. This is exactly what is happening right now because importing uh, not natural resources or products from abroad is so expensive at the moment in the country. Uh, being really creative about reusing things that are available locally and repairing them at really high quality in certain circumstances is positioning uh, the Lebanese eco-entrepreneurs in a better way. And some of them, because they are able to produce at a lower cost, given that also labor now today is, is much cheaper than employing people who are working abroad, uh, the total cost of their products is actually becoming very interesting for the international market. So many of them are now looking at exporting and at, at accessing international markets. And this is where also the role of all of these support programs that are now happening in the Southern Mediterranean and the Mediterranean at large, uh, in terms of promoting social innovation and environmental entrepreneurship, eco-entrepreneurship, is so important because these entrepreneurs need support in order to get there they need support once they have these creative ideas and innovative mechanism they they left on their own it's a very very hard journey however these incubation accelerator programs with access to funding access to grants support from experts networking opportunities so that they meet like-minded people uh, who are also struggling with different type of uh, of issues is making them all together much stronger because they can see best practice examples, they can receive free support, uh, they learn about new things that can help them. And it is, uh, of, you know, helping some of them really establish, uh, establish themselves and grow. Of course, it's not not everyone can can succeed in this journey. It's a tough one. But the ones who are really convinced, they're motivated, they're passionate about their idea and have a really good idea, are really uh, being able to position themselves in a, in a, in a way that, uh, that is advantageous. So I wanted to say this in order for uh, anyone who is listening to us today and who is considering or is an eco-entrepreneur, not to despair because the, the, it's tough to be an entrepreneur in general. It's, it's not an easy journey. 
uh, it, it takes time, it takes effort. But today, being an eco or socially responsible entrepreneur has its advantages. And so uh, don't miss this opportunity. And it is, it is the road forward. The, the world will be going in this direction, especially in Europe and the Mediterranean and our country, our countries in the southern Mediterranean are affected by these trends. So we, we, we will have opportunities that we should actually seize. Thanks a lot, Maya. I don't know if uh, any of, uh, of our uh, panelists would like to uh, add something on um, and to answer this question as well, or to add something on, on Maya's answer. Um, well, yeah, just to, to add what, to what uh, Maya was saying, um, what I fully agree uh, with her. Um, she was talking about the opportunity to to export these new eco products you know, from Lebanon to the world. Um, bear in mind also that within the European Union, the um, environmental standards will rise. Uh, the regulation is uh, every day more, 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 putting more pressure on, on, the, on these topics so that any imports that the European Union does will have to fulfill with uh, very strict environmental uh, standards. So. Uh, if you're thinking on um, an export market, well, uh, there are some some markets that will be very, very tough uh, in terms of environmental uh, environmental standards. Uh, so it's it's not an option. It's uh, it's a must of the it's a demand of the market to be sustainable. Thanks, uh, Dr. Yorgi. Uh, Dr. Ella, uh, would you like to add something uh, before? Uh... Yes, uh, uh, yeah, I would like really to, uh, to, to thank Maya because she, uh, she, she got to the really critical point. Uh, those young ideas, they need to be supported. And um, now I'm, I'm, I want really to focus on the university's pool of ideas which they have. So they, they found themselves like uh, uh, promoting, you know, coming to their end project for, uh, for the masters and uh, they have some nucleus for an entrepreneurial but unfortunately they are not finding their their way so uh, from like a third eye I can say that it's not only the role of universities it's also the, the role of the government itself to promote a policy for uh, funding to allocate fundings to support those ideas coming from especially from universities because they have no fund uh, they are barely being coached by uh, like uh, very uh, uh, if I I can say they have uh, uh, low access for uh, to be coached from uh, ex uh, expert uh, as ISO operating outside their campus. So that's why we need to make this type of a bridge and to facilitate their life, how to uh, continue in their project and to consider their project as a real uh, dream for a business and not to consider it only to be graduated. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dr. Rula. Thanks a lot. Um, so uh, I would like to welcome, uh, I, I still have two questions in the chat box, but uh, before answering the questions, I would like to welcome uh, uh, Mrs. Anna uh, Ivanes. Uh, she's a project manager at the Regional Activity Center for Sustainable Consumption and Production. And she was facing a problem with the connection, so I'm afraid to lose her. And this is why I will answer the remaining two questions just after her intervention. And the floor is yours, uh, Mrs. Uh, Anna, in case you would like to introduce or to, uh, to introduce yourself or to mention anything specific uh, about yourself before asking my first question. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, I, I hope you, you're, you're, you can hear me, okay? Yeah, we can hear you. As well. Linda said, I've got like big issue with the connection just for, for the last hour. So I'm using the, the phone. I hope the connection will be stable uh, for, for doing the intervention. So first of all, thanks a lot for, for inviting me and inviting the, the Regional Activity Center to, to this event. We are very pleased to, to take part to, to it and to try to contribute with, with our learnings and our approach on how can um, universities in this case no, strengthen this, this um, and promote this uh, green and social entrepreneurship. So, uh, just as, as uh, to briefly introduce myself and the center, I'm a project manager that uh, has been working 
on uh, well on green business uh, development projects and activities in the center for the last uh, eight nine years. Um, our center uh, actually works at Mediterranean level. is part of the uh, United Nations Environment Program and specifically for the. Uh, Mediterranean Action Plan, and we are working especially with uh, all the Southern Mediterranean countries to, to try to, to en enhance and promote and, uh, a change in the way uh, we consume and produce, uh, both for, for going from, from companies, entrepreneurs, uh, innovators, but also we uh, promote a, a change in how consumers are uh, consuming actually the, the products. So just as, as a very brief introduction. Thank you. Uh, so as our panelists mentioned, uh, we are mainly talking about the ecopreneur and the green business. And we know that uh, it's not only about the uh, financial viability and the environmental impact, it's as well about the social impact. So how can we sensitize ecopreneurs to focus on the social impact and how can we measure this, uh, this impact? Okay, well, in this sense, I mean, uh, so a green business, a sustainable business is per, per itself or it should take into account the, the social impacts. Um, it's, it, when we talk about the triple bottom line, uh, sustainability, um, we cannot separate environment from social. No, all, all the environmental uh, problems or issues that we are facing have a direct consequence to a social, to, to people. So uh, businesses have to, for sure, and entrepreneurs to, to take care of this. So um, in this sense, um, in all our work at the center, uh, when we talk about sustainable businesses, we have always in mind this, this social approach. In the sense, how can we sensitize youth towards this? I mean, this is, uh, if we think uh, in, the, in the role of universities, uh, clearly, uh, I mean, there are two main ways. The, the, the first one is to, to embed the concept of, of of uh, su sustainable businesses in the core of their of their of their curricula, no? Because now uh, universities or or most of universities uh, talk always or teach about economics, administ business administration using the business as usual approach. So I think that uh, one of the the first things to to tackle is that everything, all the curricula should talk about sustainable business. This should be the business as usual, sustainable business as usual. So I think this is the, the first thing that um, universities should do. I know it's very difficult. Uh, I know it's changing the, the, the economic theories. It, it, it might imply a lot of change and it doesn't depend only uh, on us teacher or a university, so it's a, it's a big change, but I think it's the, the, the starting point to really change the paradigm, no? and to really uh, uh, be able to, 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 tra to transmit, transfer this message to, to entrepreneurs and especially to students. Uh, um, all the activities we are doing uh, in supporting uh, green business development are, I mean, I would say that more than 60% are, are the ideas are coming from, from youth, from, uh, from an, uh, students that are still in the university. I mean, yeah. they, they have a lot of ideas. And we are seeing this uh, in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Tunisia, in Egypt. I mean, there's plenty of ideas there, but they really need a... Uh, uh, to get this uh, support at, let's say, at, at uh, curricular level and also external support from uh, uh, other programs such as uh, the one we're doing at, at the SCP RAG with the Switcher Support Program and other organizations. 
uh, apart from these, of course, uh, from out of our experience, what we are collaborating with universities, uh, with uh, non-curricular uh, activities or trainings. So for instance, in Palestine, we work with uh, 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 a university and we are strongly collaborating with them to develop all these uh, trainings on green business model, incubations, et cetera. So it's, for me, it's, there's a, 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 a very strong link there. And we like to work with uh, students with universities because they, they are the ones that are having the ideas. The universities are the ones that are in contact and are, know a lot about the ideas and what the, the youth is, is, is trying to, to create. No? And, and in this sense, um, well, uh, with universities, uh, uh, we, re we really like to create a strong uh, links. Thanks, uh, thanks, Anna. You mentioned the Switchers, uh, which is a program uh, within your uh, institution. So uh, we would like to know more about SwitchMed program, especially the same as Water Medin. It's not only implemented in one country, so it's uh, in several countries. Yes, so actually um, our center is, uh, the, the initiative is called the Switcher Support Program. I hope you're listening to me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, we, it's perfect. So it's called the Switcher Support Program, which, um, and under this initiative, we are developing all the activities uh, to support the development of, of green businesses. So it's a program, that, as, as you were mentioning, that uh, is developed in different um, Southern Mediterranean countries, going from Morocco, to Jordan, Lebanon, et cetera. And it's a, a program that uh, I would say uh, has to, it has two main levels. Uh, the first one is that we work with business super organizations, with local organizations to transfer the knowledge on how to uh, create a, and develop sustainable business. We don't want to go so to Lebanon to wherever and just give, let's say, yeah, okay, we're gonna trade 10 entrepreneurs and that's it. We want to transfer the knowledge to, to the local organizations so that they really embed this concept, this approach. I don't know if, we lost Anna. Bad connection, sorry. Yeah. Anna? We will try to call her. Okay. okay. Okay, so in the meantime, um, I don't know first if, uh, Maya, I think you, you have to leave. <laughs> yes, oh. I have to leave, but uh, before leaving, um, I would like to say a word um, about SwitchMed, so uh, if Anna is not back. Uh, just to say that I have been really involved um, from almost day one of the program in 2015, and it is an amazing uh, EU-funded support program to really transition towards uh, social innovation and green entrepreneurship. Um, the, the, the fact that the program has actually lasted and been renewed for years and years up until now, and I think up until 2023, is actually really helping grow this pool of green entrepreneurs being supported in the country, and I'm sure in all the neighboring countries who are participating under the umbrella of SwitchMed, to uh, collaborate together to really feel that they belong to a, like a new way of, of working, a new way of creating business, a new way of communicating, uh, raising awareness. And uh, honestly, it's an awesome program. I mean, it has its uh, challenges, I'm sure, but it's uh, definitely something that has been uh, um, giving a lot of value to green entrepreneurship, at least uh, to my knowledge in Lebanon. Thanks, Maya. Uh, thanks for being with us. Um, Thank you for the invitation. Uh, we hope, <laughs> oh, my pleasure. And we hope to have uh, further activities, of course, together. Thanks a lot. Um, Anna, can you hear us? Yes, I think you love me, right? We can hear you. 
you can hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. So no, it is. I don't know at, that, at what point you, you lost uh, I lost the connection. I was hearing now my friend that was talking about the, the speech med program. Yes. Her experience that was correct. Was okay. program. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so, so I backed well, you up, I Anna. Just... I backed you up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Thanks. Uh, sorry, but because with these uh, problems, I did, it's being tough. Uh, so, well, as I was mentioning, uh, we work uh, with uh, we try to to support uh, local organizations in the different countries to transfer knowledge uh, to to. Um, build their capacity so that they integrate and embed in their strategy the sustainable business approach. And for instance, uh, we work or we do this work with uh, under different projects. The SwitchMed is one of them, as Maya, Maya has been involved uh, in this project for a while, and it, I think it, it, we launched it in 2012. And we are now in this uh, in this second phase, and where we are trying to to build this uh, this local network of organizations working on 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 this, and we we work also in parallel to to with these organizations to really uh, support all these inno uh, innovators, entrepreneurs to develop. So. Just very briefly, because I don't know how how much time I have, but uh, we are. Uh, <laughs> I see some, <laughs> some. Okay, so um, yes, as uh, the switches per program, we we try to offer uh, um, a wide range or wide, but uh, but. Um, not to, but very like focus the of services to that goes from the ideation uh, stage entrepreneurs where we provide trainings uh, to develop the idea and their business model. We also have a, an incubation process and in where we accompany the entrepreneurs that are more advanced that really have a clear business model that at least on paper seems to be uh, you know, that could be um, uh, profitable in the sense of that uh, the entrepreneur could lag with this business. And then we, we also have uh, activities and supports that are focusing on access to funds and finance and access to market, because these are two issues that are um, when we've been in contact with entrepreneurs, all the feedback we're having is that it's very difficult really to, to, to access to these funds that can help them to, to first start the, launch the business because it's very difficult. And then to once they launch it to really be able to move a step farther and, and become something else than just uh, one single person working for himself or herself. So this is something that is uh, quite important for us. That's why we've created, for instance, the Switchers Fund, which is uh, the specific initiative uh, where we try to connect the entrepreneurs with uh, investors, local investors, but also uh, investors from Europe. So um, in this sense, uh, we invite all of you, I'm gonna write it in the chat to, to visit the, our websites to, to keep updated on, on the special access to finance service we are offering. And apart from this access to finance part, we are trying uh, to, to help entrepreneurs to access to the market. And we are doing this in two ways, of course, with experts and so on uh, that can help them to, for instance, uh, find new customers in the country, but also to make connections uh, with uh, European uh, companies or, or with online marketplaces and so on. But also we are trying to connect them and to help them to access to market 
with um, uh, using the open innovation approach. Mm -hmm. So our idea is that um, companies, that, well, small or medium companies have, a, a, let's say, a, a pull effect, can have a pull effect on uh, uh, creating in, in their procurement process to, to consume more products or services that are sustainable. That's why uh, we are trying, we are setting up now a, a new brand activity, a new, a new brand platform focusing on open innovation where we will try to work with uh, companies but also public actors in identifying their, their uh, environmental challenges. And we will ask, we will launch this challenge openly so that entrepreneurs and innovators can submit solutions. Interesting. And in this way, we make the match from the, we're going from the demand coming from companies and um, I don't know, uh, local governments with the potential solutions that are there, but that sometimes uh, they have difficulties to find uh, customers. So once we will make this, this match, um, we will provide uh, support to these uh, entrepreneurs in, and innovators uh, to develop the solution or to customize it uh, uh, and adapt it to the specific need of the company. And uh, hopefully uh, this solution can be implemented by this company, but also it, uh, it, uh, it can be an opportunity to open uh, more 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 markets no and to access to more markets so we are we have a, a, as you see a wide range of activities uh, but uh, um, yes what uh, our, our what we understand what we think is that we entrepreneurs are in and innovators especially youth and women uh, are the ones that are that will be able to share. So in all the projects, for instance, I'm the I'm managing a project uh, that is called a stand up mm -hmm. that is focusing on innovation and entrepreneurship, where we are really trying to 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 focus on on supporting youth and women because this is also a, a, a very important issue that as a program, as a center, we are very sensitized in this sense. And, and, and well, we, apart that the entrepreneurs really embed this approach in their businesses, we are trying to really foster this. Thanks a lot, Anna. Very, very interesting. And here I seek the opportunity to invite our audience to visit uh, SwitchMed uh, website, uh, Inedit website, uh, WaterMedian or Mappy website, and Eco Consulting. And I'm sure uh, there is a lot of uh, interesting information there for you. Uh, many thanks, um, Anna. Uh, so I will go back to the chat box where I still have two questions um, to answer. And mainly I will ask. Uh, um, anyone of our panelists uh, would like to answer the question of uh, just one second to go back uh, to the question um, of um, Mr. Lutfi. So uh, the university cannot be sustainable without its social environment. So the major concern is uh, what are the mechanisms to let the social environment uh, be integrated within the university? So regulations are the most important break for this development. So uh, he's asking you, what do you think about this issue? I will copy the question one more time in the chat box in order uh, for you to read it again, if you would like so. So I don't know if uh, Dr. Rula or uh, Mrs. Anna or the Dr. Yorji would like to Well, I'm not particularly expert on um, social uh, issues, so I don't know if Dr. Rola or Anna want to go first. Uh, 
um, I, sorry, I was reading the question. Um, I, I, actually, I'm not an expert too on, on this issue, but I, as I was mentioning, I think that, um, that it's not about regulation. Uh, uh, it's, it's not through regulation that a university will, will uh, embed uh, sustainability or a social approach in, in, their, in their, let's say, core of the, of the strategy or the, or the teaching they, they provide to students and in the curricula. It's, it's, I think it's a matter of, from one side, uh, creating, uh, well, the, ensuring that all the, the curricula the, the in business management, economics, and so on, to ensure that uh, sustainability is at the core of this. And of course, this is, uh, it has to be backed uh, by, uh, um, economic theories and so on. So I think it, this is, for me, that would be the, the ideal way, uh, but I guess it, it, this takes a long time. So a way maybe to do, to, in the meantime, to, to, to strength this approach and to promote this approach is, for instance, to offer um, non curricular uh, activities or that can help uh, students to get this knowledge which uh, probably sometimes in the in the normal um, uh, years of study they don't receive it so uh, that's why i think collaborating and uh, the collaboration between universities and this kind of programs on on organizations and creating a specific activities could be uh, let's say a, a solution in this transition to 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 a new let's say um, a type of 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 uh, business uh, uh, studies. Thanks a lot, uh, Anna. Uh, another if question. I may, uh, yeah, yes, if please. I may, yes, please, uh, uh, Linda, just to add one one point, uh, also interesting for uh, for the academic field, that once we are selecting a project for research and get funds for those research, here it is a, a role of the university to go for a triage, let's say, of the, of the most relevant uh, project which is related to the day-to-day -day, uh, concerns and in between the socio the socio-economical uh, issues within each country so here we are in a way integrating the role of the academic research but nonetheless but within a, a close relationship with the uh, 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 social uh, social environment and uh, all these uh, like uh, 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 concerns coming from the background itself thank you thanks uh, dr Rula. Uh, another question from uh, Mr. Arif. Uh, uh, he mentioned that there is a center called uh, MIN established at the Lebanese University with the support of uh, Erasmus uh, Plus C CBHE project. And he's asking how the center can focus on issues related to ecopreneurship or uh, including these issues in the center's strategic plan. So uh, I will uh, take the lead and answer your question, Mr. Arif, since I'm a, ma I'm a member at the Centre Mien. And for our audience to know about Centre Mien, it's a center for uh, career innovation and uh, entrepreneurship at the Lebanese University, of course, in, in Lebanon. And uh, mainly, of course, as you mentioned, we are working on a strategic uh, plan uh, at the center. And we are working together with our uh, students and with our uh, uh, professors and all uh, uh, the um, stakeholders, let's say, uh, within the Lebanese University in order to implement the entrepreneurship and to address mainly all the challenges and try to uh, focus uh, uh, and find solutions. And uh, and here I seek as well the opportunity to, to thank you for supporting uh, Santos as uh, Erasmus had uh, in uh, the region. Uh, I hope I answered the, your question, Mr. Arif, and uh, I invite uh, our audience uh, to mention the chat box any other question you would like to address to our uh, panelists. 
And uh, I would like one more time uh, to thank Dr. Rula, uh, Dr. Riorgi, and Mrs. Anna for, uh, for your time. Uh, it was a really, really uh, interesting intervention, listening to you, to your ideas, to the project you are supporting. Uh, of course, I would like to thank uh, Professor Madisi for all the support uh, extended to, uh, uh, to the sub-network. Uh, Dr. or Ms. Professor Wael Benjeroun as well. Uh, of course, the uh, UNIMA team, uh, Dr. Marcello, uh, Mrs. Silvia, and uh, Federica for all your support. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone would like to add uh, something. Um, I cannot see any question in the chat box. Um, one more time, uh, you are kindly invited to visit all the websites of our panelists. Uh, where you can find the very, very interesting uh, information. Um, so I can see the messages uh, in the chat box from Unimed. <laughs> it was a, a real pleasure uh, to moderate this webinar today. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks as well, uh, Dr. Rula and uh, Professor Salim, of course. Uh, so I think uh, we can close uh, on time our uh, webinar. Thanks a lot for being with us. Thanks for our audience and for your time. And um, I hope we will uh, meet soon. Stay Thank safe. You. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.